Howdy all of you delicious people. I'm here today to review Spider-Man No Way Home. So I had gone on to a app uh, called Letter C Movies and it was a Google search thing and I was able to watch a bootleg variation of Spider-Man No Way Home. So like I didn't get the best look of it. I didn't get like to me like some people could be like I don't even see what like is going on whatsoever in this film. But I really didn't care. I basically was like, hey, I could see No Way Home a day before it comes out. F it. I'm going to see this film. Because I am ex I was excited to see where this was to head. So how is Spider-Man No Way Home? Well, I would say that this movie does have a really rough beginning of a film and I'm just like, come on already. Don't tell me this is what we're getting through this film. Come on, this is really disappointing. But then all of a sudden, the movie starts to pick up. And pick up. And it just keeps... Uh, <laughs> it just keeps on climbing. And so... For those of you that are fans of Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire's villains of, of that movie, uh, you can probably enjoy this film. For the villains of Amazing Spider-Man, you'll probably enjoy the villains from that film. And then, you'll if you like Doctor Strange, you'll enjoy uh, Doctor Strange. We have some moments where Doctor Strange is to give you some closure moments from Endgame, which I'm like, ooh, like that's like that's an interesting thing here. Uh, <laughs> I have to talk cryptically in the very beginning, then we'll get to spoilers about this film. Uh, it does kind of feel for this movie, what you get in the trailer is what you get in the film, but then they go out of their way to eventually give you uh, this very interesting uh, situation in the film, uh, which I can't talk about. <laughs> but I'll talk about it in spoilers. If you want to know exactly what all happens in Spider-Man No Way Home, the spo spoiler variation, I will gear up for that soon. So what can I tell you? So we, of course, have Ned... That is to seemingly have a a magical uh, a magical thing going on with him in this movie, uh, which I think that's what I can say <laughs> in a stupidly cryptic variation. Um, I can tell you with great power does come great responsibility. I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that means nothing. <laughs> so, I would say that we also have Spider-Man going through some costume changes in this movie. And I thought that that was really cool that we just don't have Spider-Man relying on one costume and one costume alone. And so... And it seems like the new costume that they have for him in this film is really interesting. We do have two end credit scenes. One uh, end credit scene uh, that is to seemingly tie in to another movie. And then the other end credit scene is to be a trailer for just some other film. Like it's Like, it's probably not going to be like like a really amazing breathtaking looking film but it'll it'll be what it is <laughs> eventually you'll probably see it somewhere sometime soon uh coming to theaters near you so with that said uh we also have something going on with Wong that is really interesting in this film. Like, he's not carrying the film, but 
Uh, like he's not in a massive role in this film, but what we do have him going on and doing in this movie is really interesting. I really like that. Uh, it seems that we also have weirdly like Flash Thompson, who like is to kind of drastically change his appearance from uh, from what we've seen him look like before. And so, like, yeah, that's that's all I can really say. Um, we have, of course, Peter uh, trying to get into colleges in this movie. And I can say that without it feeling like there's a spoiler going on with that. And so, yeah. What can I possibly tell you that you should probably go on and research and go and find to then uh, enjoy this movie more. Uh, I would probably have to say you'd have to, because of the villains, uh, you would probably have to go on and watch the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films. And then you would also have to watch the Amazing Spider-Man movies and... You would probably have to go on and probably watch two other things uh, that I will go on to mention in spoilers. Because I have to. Uh, which will sound weird. Like, well, what two other things? Eh, we'll, we'll see. So, honestly, that's all I can say. That's all I can really just say here in a... So I said nothing. <laughs> this movie, what is it graded for me? Well, like, for a while I was kind of really disappointed in this film. But then all of a sudden, it eventually turns around and has this kind of epic thing about it. So, is it worth your time to, seeing, to see? Yes. Go ahead and see it. Go ahead and watch it. It'll be worth the money whenever you can find it, however you can see it. Go ahead and do so, because you will be uh, having that kind of like, man, what a what a what a payoff that this thing is to get into. Some people could eventually also turn around and say it's like, well, like this movie like didn't have any like big surprises. This movie didn't have any... Because some people might have felt that they already knew how all this movie was to be played out. And so with that said... Like, hey, everybody has their own way of which that this story is to be played out. So without a doubt, let's just go into spoilers. I've talked about this long enough. And I had to severely talk about it cryptically. Because now... We're going to go into this spoiler-ish in a way. So let's go out of our way to go into that double five time territory because it's about that time yet again to go into this thing called spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about the time you to spoil this movie. So I am not going to immediately just go in and gush about certain things. Like I feel that eventually once we get to certain parts of this film, then I will be doing the gushing. So I hope that this doesn't take forever to talk about because there are some parts here. There are some real wow parts. Uh, so let's get into it. So spoilers, everybody. So the very beginning of this movie is to go on and finish up from where, of course, Far From Home finished off. We have, of course, Quentin Beck, Mysterio, going on and talking and saying that Peter had taken all these drones and was wreaking all these ha this havoc with these drones. And so Peter was to sick the drones on these people and and have this kill order. And so Peter's voice is saying execute and 
so like this video is very much extended from no way home or or far from home than we originally like so we're hearing different things here we're hearing a whole completely different scene so all of a sudden we have peter who is of course swinging mj around and then is to of course drop her and so all of a sudden we have peter from far from home get this bombshell that peter parker is spider-man and so he's like oh my god so now all of a sudden mj is getting like almost attacked by these people asking her it's like oh are you spider-man's girlfriend are you do you know spider-man or oh, and so peter now has to go and web his way back to mj grab onto her and swing through town and there's nowhere for them to go there's all these helicopters around and so they're like oh my god where can i go to get out of here where can i go to be safe and so we eventually have both peter and mj making their way to now uh aunt may's place and Peter is to go to unclothe to eventually put on his uh, his Peter Parker clothes. And so both Aunt May and Happy are in this building and or in 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 Aunt May's place because Aunt May is to of course break up with Happy. And <laughs> and so Happy is crying. Because, like, MJ had dumped him. And, but now they're dealing with this. So, all of a sudden, like, Peter is now webbing, like, webbing up all of the uh, blinders and, like, helicopters are swarming around this building. And so, eventually what is to happen here is that we end up having this Agent Cleary who is to make his way into uh, Parker's place and is to, of course, arrest Peter Parker and arrest MJ and arrest Ned and, like, arrest Aunt May. And so, like, basically arrest everybody. Or, no, I think Happy ends up getting away with, like, getting away. So, we have them kind of questioning, uh, questioning these characters. And MJ's not saying anything. She's just like, hey, like, I want my lawyer. And so, Ned is to go on and confess, basically, that he was helping Spider-Man, uh, go and uh, do the things from the past movies going and helping uh peter with the vulture and also helping peter with uh mysterio and like he's confessing that he was a accomplice to all of this stuff and then the agent is like well it's a good thing that you're con uh, like confessing to me that you were accomplice in all these events that you were just some guy in a chair and then ned is like yeah, I would like everything that I just said stricken from the record. <laughs> so, Aunt May, of course, is to go on here and to say, like, hey, like, you guys don't really have anything to really charge us with. So, like, you should release us right here now. Like, you guys don't have anything really concrete to really charge us with. There isn't any evidence that... Peter Parker really is Spider-Man here. So we then eventually have Peter Parker and everybody else back at uh, Aunt May's place. And we end up having Matt Murdock go on and tell Peter Parker, Matt Murdock, Dare, ne Daredevil's Netflix. 
that it seems that Peter is to be resolved of all charges. Nobody's getting booked for everything. But Happy, he should go and get himself a lawyer. <laughs> that there is something that's going to, like, that's going to go horribly awry for Happy. So gear up for that. And Happy's like, huh? Like, yeah. So we have Matt Murdock playing into this movie. Legit it. Legit. I'm like, oh my god, like, people were saying that, like, people were saying Matt Murdock is going to be here, but I thought every, I thought it was a joke. Like, I seriously did not think that Matt Murdock was going to be in this movie. I didn't IMDb this. I didn't look to see who the cast was. I wanted to go in here completely oblivious to be blown away afterwards. So, we then turn around and so... Peter is to have to go off to school. He goes off to school to eventually have Mr. Harrington and Mr. Dell go on and greet Peter Parker with a shrine of sorts that they had made. And Mr. Dell is, is saying that Mr. Harrington like created this whole shrine and Harrington is telling Dell shut up and we had both MJ and Peter being ushered in by all these students and all these news and all these whatever and so we have Betty saying the word like hey go get him tiger I mean spider <laughs> like a real throwback to the MJ uh the MJ quote which I thought was hilarious so we have Peter trying to go through the school halls to transition us to have Peter now being on this rooftop. And so MJ is going on and she's rattling off the stuff that people are to think that Peter is to be able to do. That Peter is to have the power of like... Uh, like persuading women <laughs> and all this goofy stuff. So we also have the moment where really Peter is to think it's like, well, Hey, like where should I go now? Like, where should I live? Uh, because anybody's probably going to be like coming after me soon, uh, knowing that I'm like, I am who I am. So we transition, of course, Peter to then live with Happy in his private, uh, his private uh, apartment, his uh, his private oasis, and so we have Aunt May, Peter, and Happy living here now, and so. We, of course, end up having MJ who's asking Peter, it's like, well, hey, like, with all this going on, like, like, how do you, like, feel about this? And Peter's like, well, hey, like, since I was to have gotten bit by that spider, like, my life has never been all that normal. And so we end up having, like, both MJ and Peter talking, but... Of course, Happy is in the background trying to sleep. And so, of course, Happy hears everything. And <laughs> so Happy's like, hey, go to sleep. Like, freaking, I'm tired of your, like, I'm tired of your conversation. So we now end up having Peter trying to go and, like, fill out applications for colleges and Aunt May is to bring in to Peter every single one of these. And it's rejection, 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 rejection. And Peter is trying to go with a or uh, go to a college with Ned and MJ. And so Peter eventually is to go and get the one last college and now 
go on to find a place that evidently MJ is now working at, some uh, kind of coffee, cafe, restaurant. And so Peter is to go with Ned and MJ to kind of see their if they're going to be accepted by colleges. And so they end up finding out because of recent events that they aren't going to get accepted anywhere. And so now they're just like, God, like if, like if people just didn't know who we were and just didn't know about this event, like maybe like, like we could go and uh, get back to living normal lives. And so that all of a sudden has Peter going and noticing that MJ had left up the Halloween decorations because I guess they were like, meh, like who cares? So all this, and plus like the guy that is to be working at this place is to tell MJ, it's like, hey, I told you to take out, take down the Halloween decorations. And MJ's like, meh. So all of a sudden Peter is to realize that there is of course, Doctor Strange ornaments, and Peter is to have an idea. So, Peter is to go and find the Sanctum Sanctorium, and is to knock on the door, and they open up, and all of a sudden, we end up finding out that the Sanctum Sanctorium is to be snowed in, or is to be filled with snow, and we end up finding out why. So... It seems that the Sanctum Sanctorium was to have opened a portal to Siberia and there had been a snow blizzard coincidentally during that time thrusting all the snow into the Sanctum Sanctorium. I'm like, oh, okay, so that's a cool explanation of why there's snow in there. It feels random, but like... Maybe there actually is a whole reason for why they put snow in there. Maybe because they were filming another movie and they just wanted to kind of not show something. Or I don't know. I don't know what exactly all that means. So Peter is to go and talk to Doctor Strange. Finding out that Wong is actually the Sorcerer Supreme because Doctor Strange had been gone for five years. And so now Wong is technically by default, the Sorcerer Supreme. And <laughs> so it's like, okay, so Wong is going on to like portal his way through numerous places and do certain side missions because I guess he's now the Sorcerer Supreme. And so now we end up having, of course, Peter asking Dr. Strange, it's like, well, hey, like, Mysterio was to, of course, tell everybody who my identity was. And we also have this funny thing where Peter is to call Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange. And Doctor Strange is like, hey, like, how about you just call me, like, Stephen? And even at one point, like, Peter is to call, like, Doctor Strange, sir. And he's like, don't call me sir. <laughs> like, call me Stephen. And so... We eventually, at the end of it, like, we have this kind of back and forth, like, thing where, like, Doctor Strange is telling, like, Peter, like, don't call me Stephen, call me Sir. And then when he calls him, like, Sir, he's like, hey, call me Stephen. And so, like, there's this whole, like, goofy thing about it where, like, we have these characters that have a lot of fun. So, so Peter is going and asking Doctor Strange, it's like, well, hey, like, can't you just figure out a way to go back in time and to change that Mysterio had ever told anybody that I was Peter Parker? And Doctor Strange is telling Peter, it's like, well, like, it would be great if I could do that, but I also want to tell you that I no longer have the time stone. I'm like, oh my god, so, like, Doctor Strange doesn't have the Infinity Stone anymore? Did they destroy all of the Infinity Stones? Like, why is it that Doctor Strange does not have the Time Stone? I'm curious. Uh, yeah, like, maybe that does make sense that maybe they destroyed the stones? 
I'm thinking. I don't know. But so Peter is like, oh, yeah, that's right. You don't have the stone anymore. So we go on and, of course, we have Wong who is still trying to go through all his missions and he is to like, say it's like, well, Hey, like, um, like hopefully I don't forget, uh, something or other, uh, cause like certain people tend to forget a lot or forget all the time. Like we have Wong mentioning something about forgetting. And so Dr. Strange is like, aha, like forget. So Dr. Strange is to have this plan to make everyone forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And so like, ah, like, okay. So, cause Dr. Wong had helped in that by saying something about forgetting. And so Strange is to pick that up, that there was one time where Strange was to have, Wong have the ability to forget something. And so now, Doctor Strange is to go in this uh, in this one area to go and use this spell to make everyone forget. And so and he is to go into the, the ruins of Ka or whatever, whatever goofy thing. And so we go in here and so Doctor Strange is to start to do this spell. And just like in the trailer, we end up having Peter consistently telling Dr. Strange, it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, I need Ned to know. And, and Strange is like, what's a Ned? And he's like, my friend. And so we have Peter who's trying to like Aunt May, MJ, uh, uh, Ned needs to know, Happy, all this. So we end up having Dr. Strange changing the spell so often taking these things out to then modify the spell to the point where the spell gets out of hand and now Doctor Strange is to now have to collapse this spell because Peter was to, of course, be asking for far too much here. So we have really just Peter wanting to do this spell so that way he can go to college. And Dr. Strange is like, seriously, you had me do this whole spell so that way you can get into college. Like, how about you just go on and you talk to the MIT people and convince them for you to go to MIT? Like, if that's what you really want so badly. Because we end up having, like, Flash Thompson, who's to showcase to both Ned and MJ and Peter that he is going to get into MIT because he doesn't know Spider-Man. So we go on and we now have Peter that is trying to track down where, uh, of course, in the Iron Spider suit, where this MIT woman is so he can convince her to kind of change her tune. So we end up having Peter, who is defined the MIT Assistant Vice Chancellor. And so that's who he's technically uh, talking at a point of which where we start to get some action here. So Spider-Man is talking to this MIT Assistant Vice Ca Chancellor to convince her to change her ways. And all of a sudden, we end up having Dr. Octavius show up. And he is to, of course, say, like, well, uh, like, I, uh, I no longer have my, uh, my device that is to harness the power of the sun. And so now, like, Peter, like, where did you take it? Like, where is it? And so, like, it's kind of the same old lines. Like, there's certain parts in this movie where they recreate the same old lines from the other Spider-Man films here. And so I kind of find that to just be like, uh, 
Like, that's kind of nice. So, we have... We have now Peter going and fighting Dr. Octavius. And so, we end up having this car go off this bridge. And so, Peter is to web it to try and get the car to stay there. And so... Now, Peter is going and fighting off Dr. Octavius, and it seems that at some point we end up having, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Octavius fighting Peter on top of this bridge, and then they fight underneath the bridge. And so, eventually we then have it where Peter is to go on and or Spider-Man is to fight Dr. Octavius underneath this bridge. And so we end up having, of course, Dr. Octavius rip off the nanites because Dr. O Octavius is saying like, oh, like, uh, like just because you have this fancy suit doesn't mean you can beat me. And all of a sudden we end up having even Spider-Man having the, the other like the iron spider suit where he has the the other uh extensions and so now doc ock is like hey i guess we've met our match here so we eventually have underneath the bridge dr octavius ripping off the nanites and then it's going on to uh these arms and so all of a sudden Peter's face is to be revealed to protect his chest. And so all of a sudden now Dr. Octavius is like, hey, you're not my Peter Parker. And so Peter Parker or Dr. Octavius is to rattle off the things that he remembers. And so we end up having all of a sudden Peter Parker who is to take control of Dr. Octavius's uh, limbs and go on and be able to link himself to these arms so he can technically control them now. And so we eventually have Peter controlling both, uh, both Dr. Octavius to grab this car of this MIT woman and put it back onto the bridge. And so now Spider-Man is under, of course, this control of Dr. Octavius. And so now we have Peter talking to this MIT woman who is to basically say, hey, like, I'm convinced. <laughs> like, now I'm going to let you and Ned and whoever you want in MIT and just kind of keep up what you're doing. And so Peter's like, seriously? And he's like, she's like, yeah. <laughs> so we eventually have Doctor Strange going and taking both Peter Parker and Dr. Octavius into this uh, spot of the undercroft this little area that is to cage up certain villains so we have of course dr strange now saying that he was to go and find through this sewer a lizard-like character and so it's like oh my god like they brought back dr connors they brought him back and so from Amazing Spider-Man, that first movie. And so now we have Doc Ock and now we have the lizard both caged up. And so now Peter Parker is to need an explanation of what's going on. And so Doctor Strange is to explain that anybody who is to ever know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man through any other multiverse is all coming here. So anybody that is to know who Peter Parker is, is to appear here. 
We also had a moment where, of course, we had the Green Goblin with his bomb come in, and then Green Goblin was to go ahead and fly in, and that is, of course, when both Peter and Dr. Octavius were sent to where Dr. Strange was. So, now Green Goblin is having some time in this new world to marinate on things, and so we all of a sudden have Green Goblin who is to be talking to his helmet again, like in the in the other Spider-Man movie, where we eventually seem to have Norman who is kind of taking control over his villainous side and is not going to do what his villain side is telling him to do. So we then have Doctor Strange that is telling Peter that he has to go and retrieve every single multiverse villain and like bring them here to this Undercroft so that way they can all get sent back. He's going to go and grab this ancient uh, artifact of sorts that is to go and put all these things back from once of which they came. So we, we go on and we, of course, have Peter, who is to have to go and work with Ned and MJ in this Undercroft to retrieve all of these villains, the rest of them, and to do some, do some Scooby-Doo crap. And so we have Ned who arrives in the Sanctum Sanctorium, and he's like, well, hey, like, I always felt that I had some kind of magic ability, like, uh, that my fingers would tingle every once in a while. And so... We eventually have, of course, Ned, who's going to eventually be able to make portals here in this film. Uh, so that's really cool. So, <laughs> so MJ and Ned, Peter, go into this Undercroft. And so now they're talking, of course, to Dr. Otto Octavius. And they're laughing at his name. And so... We now have them going and trying to figure out what is the next villain to go and get. And... We, of course, have Norman Osborn who stumbles right into Aunt May's place. where she's kind of taking care of people. And so Peter is to get confronted by Norman Osborn, who realizes that Oscorp doesn't exist in this world and that any resemblance of anything is to just not exist in this world. So Peter is to go on and say like, well, hey, like Norman, like I'll go and I'll, I'll take you to where everyone else is and then you'll be able to uh, like kind of go home. So we have Peter that goes on and is to find out that there is another villain threat. And before Peter goes and gets Norman, we have Otto that's mentioning to Peter that if he's going to go and get Norman Osborn, Norman Osborn is dead. So Peter is chasing after a ghost or maybe there's something else there. So Peter is going on and swinging through these electrical uh kind of towers just kind of swinging and so we have Peter with this now much more 
modified magical suit where Peter is to have this uh, kind of like Doctor Strange like tether like thing that he is to be able to tether these villains and so Peter is to make his way to two other villains and so Peter is to now have to fight off Electro and while he's doing that he all of a sudden is to meet Sandman Flint Marco I'm like, oh my god, Flint Marco is in this movie? Oh my god. Like, it feels like Flint Marco is a very, like, CGI-ish-like character in this movie. But still, we get Flint Marco. We get Sandman in this movie. And so, we have Flint that does not really want to fight Spider-Man. So, he's honestly helping Peter fight off Electro here. And so, we have, of course... Peter using his strange, his Doctor Strange power to kind of take these characters and put them into the Undercroft. So now we have everyone catching up. And so Dr. Os Os or blah. Do Dr. Octavius is to tell Norman Osborn what his fate was that he was to be, of course, dead. And Sandman was to go on and tell both Norman Osborn he was to die by a glider and that Dr. Octavius had died via his own machine, that his own machine had killed him. The thing that is to harness the power of the sun had killed him. Because he was technically in Spider-Man 3. So. Now of course we have Max. Who is to be Electro here. And we have Connors going and talking. Like kind of catching up also. So. Talking that Max used to know, like, Connors and, like, he used to work with him. So, we have, of course, Electro, who is to mention that the this power in this universe is to be, like, amazing and it's different and he just doesn't want to let it go. And so, because at first he appears as this blue entity, but then he goes back to looking like uh, like Jamie Foxx does because I guess, heaven forbid, they actually gave this guy a legitimate... <laughs> like, hey, like we'll just make him look like Jamie Foxx. We won't really get all that creative. So, so we go... Blah, blah. We go on to this film and... So we have Doctor Strange, who is very tempted to just want to take this ancient artifact and put these guys all back where they came from to have them meet their fate of all being killed off. And Peter is just so tempted to do exactly what Doctor Strange is saying. And Aunt May is like, no, like, don't just take all these people back all to die off no like be different do something else so peter is trying to do the right thing here and so peter wants to prevent all these villains to go back to be killed off so he in turn goes on and webs up the ancient artifact takes it from strange and tries to run off with it for then dr strange to now have to fight spider-man and so peter is to of course now fight dr strange to the point of dr strange then astro project projecting peter 
for then Strange to just take the artifact, which he still can't. It seems that Peter is doing this kind of like keep away kind of thing. And then Peter is to go back into his body and like tell him, hey, like, I know that this is a bad thing that I'm doing, but like never do that again. <laughs> so Peter then runs off for Strange to now capture Peter into the mirror realm. That's when we start to see all the weird, goofy things, all of the train-like things, like the combination of these weird, goofy visuals that just be like, Whoa, okay, well, like, all right, there's a, <laughs> there's some weird visuals here. So we have Strange, of course, using all these things to try to capture Peter. And so Peter is to use science to then kind of web up certain things and goes on to figure out a way to take down Strange and then take his, uh, his magical ring from him and then takes the artifact from him and then goes back to be out of the mirror uh, the mirror realm and is to go on and take all of these villains and is going to try to cure them of everything that ails them. Like basically taking all of their powers away to neutralize them to then I guess make them see the light kind of thing. So we have Peter kind of asking all these guys, it's like, well, hey, like, are you with me or are you just going to stay here? And so all the villains with the exclusion of the lizard Connors are to go on with Peter to Happy's uh, private oasis and his his place and so now peter is to have this equipment called this like fabricator thing where it seems that it can fabricate anything and like i guess that's like that seems like a a cheap way to like get us out of this whole thing but like really for this it's just like a convenient thing to have and honestly, with uh, Far From Home, like that whole fabricator thing does make a lot of sense to have this here now. So at first, we, of course, have Peter cure Dr. Octavius of his inhibitor chip. So Peter concocts an inhibitor chip to put back into Dr. Osborne or Dr. Osborne. Dr. Octavius, there's too many doctors here. And we have the one moment where Norman Osborn is to tell Peter, it's like, well, hey, like, it seems that you're a scientist. I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. And, like, maybe I can help you, like, figure out how to cure everybody. So we have Doc Ock get his inhibitor chip, and he is to fill right as rain. And so Peter goes on and is to cure Max uh, or Electro of his electricity and is to put this uh, thing that is to take all the electricity away from Max to then make him like human again. And Max is going on. He's like, you know what? This is weird. Like, I don't know if I can do this. And, like, Sandman's like, hey, man, like, uh, you'll be fine. Like, they'll cure you and then you can go home. So, we all of a sudden have Peter, after he's starting to cure certain people, he's starting to get that weird spider sense, Peter Tingle. And... So now he's kind of going on into the apartment to try to figure out what that tingle is, what the problem is here. 
And so Peter goes on and is to web, uh, web up something. And we end up finding out that Norman Osborn was to still have his evil side of him, which is to now creep out here. And so now we have Norman Osborn who is going and is to, of course, go and fight uh, Peter. And we end up having them fight throughout this building. We also have the lizard helping out uh, take down Peter, as well as Electro is to take off his inhibitor and kind of fight a little bit here also. So we have, of course, Norman mentioning how like weak and strong Peter is that he's, uh, He's too strong to take, uh, like, he's strong enough to take everything that he wants, but too weak to not actually go and go through with it. To just, <laughs> that, like, so, uh, we go on here, and so, Peter is trying to battle Norman through this place, and... Eventually, what happens here is that Aunt May is to go on and start stealing certain equipment so she can use to defend herself. And so how eventually this plays out is that Norman is to go and talk to Aunt May and Aunt May is to put some thing into Norman's neck, which doesn't really do much. And so Norman is to go on and take one of his goblin balls, his goblin bombs, and is to toss it into the room where both Aunt May and Peter are at. Peter tries to uh, grab the bomb to get rid of it, but stuff happens. We also had J. Jonah Jameson finding out where Peter Parker was and was staging something outside the building for something to happen here. So, because we have J. Jonah that's getting an anonymous a tip from somebody, and now he's going to uh, see what is to happen here. So, Peter is to now see Aunt May, and so Peter is like, hey, Aunt May, are you fine? And Aunt May's like, yeah, I think I'm fine. And Peter's like, yeah, I think I broke a couple ribs. But then all of a sudden, Aunt May is to fall over and she is to die here. And so on May is to tell Peter he tried to do the right he did the right thing here and with great power comes great responsibility. I'm like, "Oh my god, so Aunt May is the Ben Parker in this movie." I'm like, "Oh my god." So Peter never had to have Ben Parker in this movie. He just had to have Aunt May. And I'm like, wow. And so Aunt May is to give Peter the with great power comes great responsibility thing. And I'm like, oh my god. This is crazy. So... Peter is now holding Aunt May as she's, of course, dying. And so now we go on and have Peter that is so upset that he tried to do the right thing here. And he's mourning the loss of his aunt who is now dead. 
And I'm like, oh my god, this is a huge thing to put in this movie. Hence why, like, we had the character who was Aunt May. Like, she was just saying, like, well, I guess it was a good thing that I uh, listened to my agents for once and did this film. Because I'm sure she just wasn't all that excited doing the press for this movie, realizing that this is going to be, like, her last thing of this or maybe it was just the opposite where she's kind of like relieved it's like man i just can't wait till all this press is over because like i won't have to do anymore because aunt may is now dead oh my god this is a huge thing uh so now that peter is off on his own just mourning the loss of his aunt and maybe like being very upset also realizing that what he has done was all a waste so and that norman was to tell peter it's like well hey like you foolishly went and did your aunt's mission like her goodwill mission for it to turn out the way it did so now we end up having Ned and MJ who were to be like, they had this like weird video feed that they had in here, kind of watching what's going on. And so Ned is to, Ned and MJ are wanting to try and figure out where Peter is because he's just off on his own letting all these villains run rampant because he just doesn't like he needs time he needs time to mourn so I don't think I'm gonna need the IMDB up here uh, I think I'll be good uh, <laughs> I don't think there's any like uh, weird things that come up here so We also have Happy that was to also make his way back to this apartment. He's going and calling Peter, telling him, hey, like, there's a bunch of weird robotic armed guys that are, <laughs> that are in my apartment. Like, what the heck is going on here? Uh, like, call me, Peter. And so when Happy makes it in to the building... He merely gets arrested and also sees Aunt May is dead. So now let's go back to MJ. Let's go back to Ned. So both MJ and Ned are wanting to know where Peter is. So we have Ned deciding that he needs to go and... Uh, be able to see where Peter Parker is. So all of a sudden, Ned is to use the Doctor Strange power to bring back Peter Parker, but it's not the Peter Parker that we know from this film. All of a sudden, we have amazing Spider-Man Andrew Garfield appear here and they are to now have to be convinced that this guy is Spider-Man, that he's Peter Parker. And so he goes and jumps onto the ceiling and is holding there. And they're like, well, that means nothing. Crawl on the wall. And so all of a sudden, Andrew Garfield climbs all over this wall and to get down one of these spider webs. And so... They're like, oh my god, he's technically a Spider-Man from another world. So, all of a sudden, MJ and Ned are just thinking like, well, hey, like we just need to just keep using uh, this portal thing to find our Peter Parker. And so all of a sudden, they end up doing this again to find Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, appear... And he's just wearing these, like, kind of normal clothes. And I'm like, what? Like, they actually pulled this off? I'm like, oh my god, they seriously pulled this off. 
So now, of course, like this other like Tobey Maguire Spider Man now has to prove that he's Spider Man, and so we end up having this kind of web off like thing where now uh, Ned's mom is wanting, of course, these guys to go and clean up their webbing. And they're like, oh, okay, like, sure, we'll sure do. So Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker is to say, it's like, well, hey, like, I sense that your Spider-Man in your world, like, needs help here. And so I, like, like, how can I help? So we, of course, have these guys find out what it all had gone on here. And so... We have Andrew Garfield mentioning that he had lost somebody and that he had gone into like a rage and been very upset. And so he's hoping that this Spider-Man doesn't go into that same uh, like way of things. So it, where both MJ and Ned are to find Tom Holland, Peter Parker. And so we end up having, of course, Tom Holland mentioning and like saying that he had lost like Aunt May. And so that all of a sudden turns around and have both Andrew and Toby mentioning that they had gone through the same thing. And that, uh, of course, Andrew is to mention that he had lost Gwen, and Toby is to mention that he had lost his Uncle Ben. And so Tom Holland is to mention with great power, and Tom McGuire is to finish it with great responsibility. And Tom is like, how did you know that? It's like, because my uncle told me that. It's like, these guys are to tell Tom, it's like, hey, we've been there. We've been in your shoes. And we've we've all lost somebody. So, we now have it where Andrew was to ask, uh, of course, Toby, if he has his Spider-Man suit on. And Toby was to kind of like lift down his shirt to like, yeah, like I have my suit on. Because <laughs> every one of these Spider-Man are all going to suit up. And I'm like, oh my God, this is actually happening. So now all of the Spider-Men are all going and trying to come up with cures for every one of their villains. And so... Toby Spider-Man had thought about the cure for Norman Osborn for a long time. And we have Andrew that was to be able to also concoct his, uh, like his cures for his characters. Plus we already have Tom who is to have already thought of a cure for uh, Max. So it's kind of the same principle. So we go on and have them all go through and like we kind of give all these characters kind of closure moments where we have Toby that is to ask Andrew. It's like, well, hey, like, are you with somebody? And Andrew is to mention that he doesn't have much time for the Peter Parker stuff. And so Andrew asked Toby, it's like, well, do you have somebody? And Toby is to mention, it's like, well, yeah, like I technically do have somebody, like we're making it work. I'm like, man, you couldn't have said, <laughs> you couldn't have said that you're married now. You couldn't have, like, we had that whole Spider-Man 3 where we have him have the ring but, like, so we don't have that closure moment. Like, we just still have it where it's kind of, like, this complicated, like, thing. But it still works. 
that he is to have his MJ and things are to work out. So we have like all like the Spider-Man going and coming up with this cure. So they all figure it all out. So now we have Peter going and putting this video out there for J. Jonah Jameson and so we have Tom Holland basically telling the guys where he's at because he's at the Statue of Liberty that is to, I guess, be getting a remodel. So we have Tom Holland like basically telling the villains where he's at so that way they can come after him. And so Tom is saying for all the listeners, if they're all listening, it's like, well, yeah, we're, we're worldwide. Uh, J Jonas Jameson is saying, it's like, well, well give me like all the luck that you can to your fav, uh, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. So now we, of course, have to mention, because they keep bringing it up, that Tobey Maguire has his spider webs be very organic. That it means that it comes straight out of his hand. So when they all get together, all three Spider-Man, they're immediately wanting to ask, like, hey, man, like, how... <laughs> like, how do you have that? Like, how, like, how are you doing that? And he's like, I don't know. It just like, it just happens. And so Xandrew is like, man, that'd be a really great thing to have because like web shooters for me, I always, I always run out and like, and Tom just has this, uh, of course, consistent, uh, just, uh, continue thing where he can keep getting web shooters from somewhere. Because his is like kind of like uh, he can manufacture them somehow. So we also have Tom Holland asking everybody like, hey, guys, like also like just in case, like what kind of villains have you guys ever faced? Like what is like your most hardest villain that you've ever faced? And Tobey Maguire mentioned is like, well, hey, I fought an alien once. <laughs> And Tom was like, really? Like, I fought an alien once, too. And, like, it was a big purple guy. And so they're kind of reminiscing about all the stuff that they fought. We have Andrew that mentions uh, a big rhino guy. And Toby's like, oh, my God. Like, wait a minute. Like, I haven't had have, haven't had faced that kind of complication. Like, you're really amazing, Andrew, you're really amazing. <laughs> Just kind of poking at the fact that Andrew Garfield is amazing Spider-Man. So, of course, like, he should get this, like, weird goofy title that they have to poke fun at. So, <laughs> and I loved that part. It was so hilarious. So, now, we, of course, have Max arrive here, Electro, and so now we have the Spider-Men fighting their respective villains. And I'm like, wow, this is so cool. We have Andrew going and fighting both Connors and Max. And so we start to get where, like, Andrew is to try to take out his villains here. But then we start to have... Uh, certain people with the cure or certain people with uh, certain kind of things. And that ends up getting to be a jumbled mess. And so they have to regroup and say, it's like, well, you know what? Like we can't have like one person go out there and then two have this cure kind of thing. Like, it seems like we really need to team up here and be like the Avengers and both Garfield and Toby are like, 
what are the Avengers? Are you in a band? Are you like, and so like, we have, of course, Tom mentioning the Avengers and neither one of these guys know what the Avengers are because they don't have it in their world, which I'm like, okay, I guess that perfectly helps us realize that these other Spider-Man don't have certain things in their world, which is hilarious. So we have Tom saying like, no, we have to like work as a team, like have kind of, uh, like together, like attacks and the like, oh, okay. Like I get, I get what you mean. So they go on and they start teaming up and, but more villains end up starting to come in also. So we then have Flint Marco coming in. And so Flint Marco is to kind of put a wrench in what they're doing. We kind of have, uh, of course, Tom getting taken by uh, the Sandman and getting hurt by the Sandman. So, but we start going on and having all these guys like Hot Dog and everything like that. So, Toby is to give the cure to Flint Marco and we have uh, Doc Ock that comes in who is to still have his cure. So he goes on and is to of course take the cure from Maxwell and he is to grab it from uh, from Andrew and is to rip off the uh, like the power suit that uh, Electro has here and give him the inhibitor for him to lose all of his power. So like Doc Ock is now good and he's working with the other Spider-Man. And so now we have that moment where Toby and Doc Ock are having this reminiscent moment. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so great. This is so great to have this kind of like leaving off moment. I wish that they would have honestly gone with the exact same line of when Toby is to say in Spider-Man 2, it's like, well, like, it's the good for all mankind. Like that whole line there uh, where it's a privilege and like they should have used that line to go and defeat Doc Ock or kind of end up end uh, with Doc Ock here. So really everyone is to eventually get taken down. We have Tom who is to fight it off with the lizard to not have the cure for the lizard, but then eventually they go and they cure the lizard also. So the last one really left here is to be Green Goblin. So now we have Tom going off to face Green Goblin and Tom is not holding back here. And Andrew is, is, uh, in his scene is to mention that he, like, got angry and didn't pull his punches anymore. So, we have, of course, Tom, who's just beating the crap out of Green Goblin, and Tom is to almost be looking for a killing blow here. And Green Goblin has this kind of this knife thing to just go and try to attack Tom to start to cut him up. And then when Tom is to go for the final blow of Green Goblin, you have Toby who stops Tom and all of a sudden we have Goblin who stabs into Toby. I'm like, oh my god, don't tell me they're going to kill McGuire off here. Don't give me that garbage. But it seems like he's fine. It seems like he's fine. 
We end up also having this re-reference moment where Toby was to mention that he had a bad back. And I'm like, oh my god, yeah. Like, looking at, like, Spider-Man 2 and knowing that Toby, for a long time, did have, like, a back problem through those Spider-Man films. And Andrew was saying, like, well, hey, I got, a, like, a bad back thing problem, too. You want me to crack it for you? He's like, yeah, like, <laughs> I really appreciate it. And so they crack one another's back. So we have now Norman, who is to also get his cure, and he is to realize what a mistake he had made. And so now, finally, Doctor Strange is to come in and is to try to prevent all these people from trying to come in who all know who Spider-Man is. And so Strange is trying to prevent all these things from coming in and trying to seal all these things. And he can't control it anymore. And because Strange had made it back from the mirror realm and is to take his, uh, his sling ring from Ned so that way he can return everyone back to where they were. And so Andrew is now going and uh, like uh, putting Toby over his shoulder. And so now Tom is to make it back to Strange, who's holding off all this stuff. And so now Peter is telling Strange, hey, Go and do that spell again to make everyone forget. So that way nobody knows who I am anymore. And Strange is like, well, that's the one thing about this spell that it's going to backfire. No one, even the people that you love, are not going to know who you are anymore. And Peter's like, well, that's fine. Like, just do it. So Strange does this spell... And I'm like, does that affect just this Tom Holland or does or this Peter Parker or does it affect every Peter Parker? And we also had that one moment where Ned was calling for Peter Parker and they're like, well, which one? <laughs> There's three of us. It's like, well, Parker, it's like, that's us, too. <laughs> and it's, like, it's like, go to this computer. And they're like, oh, it must be that one. <laughs> so. We now have Tom who has to say his goodbyes to certain people. So Tom goes and is to talk to MJ and Ned and tell them, well, like, I'm going to have to have Strange make everyone forget who I am. And so both of you are going to forget who I am. And so Ned is now telling Peter, it's like, well, hey, you better come back and tell me who you are. And MJ is telling him the same thing. Plus, there is one moment where MJ was to tell Peter that she should have had him come to them to really figure something out instead of going into this extreme measure of Doctor Strange using this spell. And so it's leading them to kind of go and team up now to solve this problem, this really extravagant problem. So now MJ is to talk to Peter here and say like, hey, like you better, <laughs> you better find us and come up with the right words to like explain to us that you are Spider-Man. You have to convince us. And Peter's like, okay, I'll go and I'll do that. So... We then have Tom going back to both Toby and Andrew and we have it where he's trying to like talk to them, but they're like, do we know what you're going to say? Like, <laughs> cause you're us. So Tom is just like, well, okay, like goodbye all of you. <laughs> it's, it was nice to meet all of you. So 
we have Tom go off and Andrew's asking Toby, it's like, you're really hurting right now, aren't you? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so now Strange is to use his power to take all the villains back and take all the Spider-Men back and then to use his power to make everybody forget who Spider-Man is. And so the first one that's to confirm that is J. Jonah Jameson is to do this report saying like, whoever this Spider-Man is, ah. Uh. We also had that really nice uh, kind of report that J. Jonah Jameson was to do right after Aunt May was to die here. And like Peter was watching on as J. Jonah Jameson was doing this report, like talking about uh, like talking to us this moment where we have, of course, J. Jonah mentioning how much of a threat like Spider-Man is to lead to these kinds of moments. So now we have Peter who is to try to put out this uh, this note of what he's going to say to both Ned and MJ. And so Peter goes to this cafe and is to see these two characters. And so Peter is to say, hi, I'm Peter Parker. I'd like a coffee. So MJ is like, well, is there anything else? And he says, no. And he walks off like, oh, my God. He doesn't tell Ned or MJ anything. And he walks off. I'm like, oh, my God. So... Wow. So Peter goes off to his Aunt May's uh, grave and we have Happy there. And so Happy is saying that he knew Aunt May through Spider-Man. I'm like, wait a minute. That would have to say that Happy would have known Peter Parker was, this doesn't make sense. How does Happy still find Aunt May if Happy doesn't know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man? Because how does that, how does that get explained here? Because that doesn't, like, Maybe they have to, like, retcon somewhere of how that Happy doesn't know. But that feels like a huge, massive plot hole here. That It's like, wait a minute, how does Happy not know? But we have Happy... Uh, and Peter having this one moment together. And... Like, it's a really nice kind of finishing up moment because we always have to have, like, from Homecoming and, and like, every bit of these movies, there always has to be this kind of, like, harpening back to Homecoming where at the end, it's really just Tom Holland and Happy, like, sharing this, uh, like, bathroom stall. And now we have here where they're sharing this grave. And so Peter is mentioning that he is to know Aunt May from Spider-Man. And Happy's like, same, same. So we have Peter Parker, who supposedly no one is to know. But weirdly, we have Peter, who is to have money somewhere to afford an apartment building, 
I guess maybe he got a job somewhere? <laughs> like, he got some random job somewhere where nobody knows who he is? Uh, <laughs> like, how exactly did this all happen? Did uh, Happy, like, give him a couple hundred bucks? Just like, hey, since I know Aunt May, like, here's, here's some money. Uh, maybe we just didn't see that scene. But Peter is to have his own place. A place that's kind of uh, wipe slate clean. And, but, but Peter is to have a bunch of boxes because uh, he's moving on. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of nice. Like, that's a cool approach. So does Peter make it uh, to MIT? Like, does that still work out? Who exactly did he get a rep recommendation from to get to MIT? <laughs> like, I guess maybe grades or something. But yeah, like, that's how this movie is to just end off with... Uh, so what is the end credit scenes? The end credit scene, we end up having... Eddie Brock, who is to appear in this world, and he's at this spot where he's talking to some bartender, and because of what happened at the end of this movie, Eddie Brock is to get sent back to where he was from, but there's a little bit of venom left giving us this idea that we might have another black suit Spider-Man coming. And I'm like, oh my God, if we could only just get to that, I would, like, I would just be amazed at this story. Because if they seriously do that, if they give us a black suit Spider-Man, like, we're going to still have to go and reflect back on Aunt May's death. And that's still going to push Peter to be like, there's going to be a lot of things weighing on him from this movie. So it's easy for the, for him to become this black suit, Spider-Man man. Um, but then the trailer at the end of this movie is the trailer for the Dr. Strange movie where we have Scarlet Witch, who's going to be in the Doctor Strange uh, Multiverse of Madness movie. Uh, we're also seeing like a, a big, massive trailer of a thing for this. And so like there's already like uh, people that have gone on to the end credits scenes of this. You can see a video of what it looks like. Um, I want to actually see a legitimate trailer somewhere in like the later on, but, uh, or, or eventually I also want to go and rewatch this movie in a different variation to get like a better taste of this movie. Um, because I think I'm going to watch it a lot, uh, or I hope to keep coming back to this. I don't care if it's two hours. Like I want to go and, uh, like continue to like come back to this because it has both Andrew Garfield and it has Tobey Maguire. And so I'm like, oh my God. So this is a generation movie. Like whichever movie that, whichever thing that you went into, like it's like, yeah, like a massive payout at the end of this. A lot of fan service, a lot of reflection of the other films making its way back here. So for people that had seen these movies probably hundreds of times, like I possibly did, uh, now this is another one of these where I'm like, oh my god, it was so great to see this now, and everyone will eventually get that ability to see this film. And so I'm still kind of wondering, what does this spell all mean for Spider-Man? And plus also... Like, what exactly does this mean for Spider-Man? What is this all a wrap-up thing? Are we going to have some chunk of time between sequels now, considering they can kind of do whatever? How many sequels are they going to do? Like, are we going to continue to re-tie in 
Toby and Andrew? Is that going to be a possibility? Or is this just going to be a one-off thing, which I would be 100% fine with? I kind of wish that Venom, in some way or another, would have had a tie in this movie. Would have possibly been a villain in this film, considering how we just really didn't get a Venom in the other thing. Wouldn't have that have been nice <laughs> to get more screen time from that? But we just don't get it, so oh well. Um, but we get another Venom at the end of this film, so that should just be good enough. So, with that said, I think that is to be good enough for me to talk about this. I feel like I didn't get all of it in there, but I got the best that I could do with uh, especially the audio quality of this movie. And especially with, like, there's a lot of stuff to talk about in here, so I tried to do my best. But... Like, uh, it's a really amazing film. It's spectacular. It's, <laughs> it's a, I kind of honestly don't understand the tagline of No Way Home. Because I guess technically Spider-Man is to not have anybody know who he is anymore. But I still wonder if Strange knows who he is. But again, we have that still that whole like Sir and then Steven and then Steven and then Sir. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to get out of here. I've talked for far too long for this one. I wanted to get this out there. I took so much time to try to do this one. And so, yeah, I'm going to get out of here so I can get this uploaded. Uh, yeah, uh, amazing payout film. Um, better than I could have hoped it was, because I was, my hopes were so freaking low for this. People were thinking it was going to be awful. I thought it was like, oh my god, a rough start of this, but man, did they have a massive payout. The battling, and the death of Aunt May, and just actually adding in the other Spider-Men made this movie what it was. And I was like, oh my god, how are they going to top this? They can't. They're just going to have to go and do another sequel if they do another sequel. That is to just be like, hey, guys, like, I guess Venom, right? Because <laughs> what else could they do? Uh, they're going to have to do a Venom movie because what else can they do here? Um, they have to do a black suit Spider-Man because that's, again, all they can do. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. But we now have technically... Venom in the MCU. We technically have Venom, one way or another, in the MCU. And so that will be cool what they play with here. So I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.